Hello everyone, this is Jean-Michel for OSIA. In this video, we are going to see how to use OSIA with Faust. Faust is a programming language made by DRAM in France, which is about creating super efficient digital signal processors. We'll see that OSIA provides a deep integration of Faust, so you can load any kind of Faust program and use them as any other node in the OSIA score environment. So let's see how it looks. When you first open SCORE, you are greeted with that welcome window. If this is the first time you install SCORE, it will at some point prompt you about um, running the, downloading the SCORE library from the internet. So this is something that is important to know. The SCORE library provides all the first files. So check every other couple of months that we did update it because there is a lot of examples. So, if we look, for instance, on the website, github.com slash osia slash score user library, we can go into presets, Faust, and see all the presets that we are allowed to use. So thanks to the Faust team for allowing us that. And these are all DSP files, classic Faust files. And if you allow the score to download and install it, you will find all these files into your home directory in the documents, OSIASCO library, and it will make a clone of that repository here in score user library master. A better workflow for importing XML user libraries is being worked on, but it's not finished yet. So here you can find yeah, presets, foes, blah, blah, blah. So when you're in score, the way to use FOS or any kind of signal processor is through processes. So uh, remember that in SCORE, we create timelines, basically, and we add processes to the timelines. So the processes are the little, um, little uh, this little icon at the, in the bottom left corner, and we can find them in audio slash FOS, and you can find all the other kind of processes here, but Right now, we are interested in the first ones. And the user library will, will be scanned and we'll look for every DSP file and we'll show them in their folder so that you have some context. So for instance, we have um, some very classic things. So we can look at them like that. And we can, for instance, search. So if I look for the K plus strong uh, plucking algorithm, I can just type K plus here and I will find it. And I can drop it here. And in this very simple action, this drag and drop, what happens is that the first compiler is called and it creates a super efficient DSP from our code. So this is a very neat way to, to write things. And then what, what do we see? Oh, so this one is a bit complex. It has MIDI, so we'll see MIDI afterwards. Uh, let's see this one. Yes, this one is simply an audio processor. So if we press play, if you hear, there is some note being played here. Okay, so what, what we often do when using score is setting a trigger at the end of the thing we're working on. This way, it is um, always running. And right now, what I just did is put it in full view. So I double clicked here. And since we are mostly going to work in the signal domain, uh, we, are, we will switch into nodal mode. So nodal is this little icon here. And here we are. Here we just have our node like in max MSP or pure data. And yeah, here we can press this play button to trigger it. Um, change potentially various, various things. Okay, I don't know what this is doing, but it's doing things. Okay. Okay. So, and as you can see, the controls that are defined in the first processor are all mapped to UI controls in score, either in the main view, but if you want to make it small to, because you have a lot of nodes, you can also access all the controls in the inspector. So, um, uh, for instance, here, um, So that's how you will do it. Then, as you can see right now, I'm triggering things by hand. Of course, that is not super fun. So most of the time, 
if you are playing some synthesizers, you likely want to hook up some MIDI device in its input. So we will see how to do that later. But right now, let's see a simple uh, case, which will use our step sequencer. It will just uh, trigger some signals repeatedly. And OK. And here, as you can see, So in Faust, since it signals, we want to make a good delta. Uh, here, if we want to trigger things every, let's say every, not bit, but every 100 samples or something, that's what we have to do with this step sequencer. We have to say, it, OK, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And the delta will trigger this plaything. But that's not something which is usually done. It's only for the sake of this demonstration just to have something that um, runs for some time. OK. All right. So this is a very first, a very simple first case of usage of uh, those things. Then we may want to apply, say, a filter. So Faust comes, for instance, with, say, uh, low pass filters. So before that, we are going to change the pitch a bit to make it um, livelier. So I'll just add an LFO here. So LFO classic oscillator. And I, as you can see, everything in score is done by drag and drop. So here I can I take the output of my LFO, which is this little green dot, say, output port. So the convention is that empty dots are input ports and uh, full dots are output ports to signify that there is some signal fitting, overflowing it. Uh, it's overflowing with data. And we are going to say, OK, this is going to change the detune thing. Um, OK. And we'll add some noise. Um, and that will make, well, it's kind of livelier. Now, um, since it's uh, very horrible, we are going to add some low pass filter afterwards. So I just dropped it. It's been built to be, this one is very fast, but some other patches are kind of slow. And now, as you can hear, uh, my thing is kind of filtered. Okay, so like that, for instance, it can do some fun effects. So um, maybe I want to use, say, my LFO to control the frequency. I can do that. I can just do pop, uh, offset. And here it's not very pretty, it's noise. OK. With an LFO, we hear it much better. Uh, same, same way we hear it much better. So this is a, uh, yeah, very simply put, it's like Max, you, you put uh, first objects directly on the grid, on the, on the patch, and they, they will work automatically. Um, now, um, another thing that we may want to see is uh, how to, let's say, make it work with, if you have sound files that you want to process, how, how does that work? So I'll add some uh, loop, for instance, um, so like that. OK. So here I have a um, sound loop, which is a bit loud. It will run forever. And we'll do the same here. We'll go into this uh, nodal mode. And um, let's say we want to add I don't know what kind of fun thing. Maybe a reverb. Okay, reverb is nice. Oh, this one doesn't work, it seems. Okay. Okay. And like that, you can just very simply filter your things. And since it the OCR score environment, everything can be nested at arbitrary depth, so you can have sub patches and some sound scenarios which will be fed inside first effects that kind of things uh, so let's get back to it 
Uh, yeah, to, to give an example of that, for instance, what we can do is add, um, okay, make it a bit less long. Uh, we'll add a scenario process at some point, okay, like that. Okay. And in this one, we'll add a couple different sounds. So let's say, I don't know uh, what kind of sound we can add. Okay, so we will add a couple sounds, for instance, um, let's say like this, and uh, okay, we'll just make that bigger. Okay, one sound. Um, I don't know what other kind of sound we can add. It's likely not going to be very pretty, but well. <laughs> and uh, okay. And if we go over there. Uh, Okay, so that one. So it's pretty horrible, but what matters is that we can take the output of this composition of sounds and pass it to a first process tool. So um, what kind of fun thing is there? Let's say flanger maybe. Okay, so just drag it like that and and. The effect apply it's like a bus, so you can have bus which um, buses map to the hierarchy level in score. So that's one first thing. So now let's see a third thing. It's how to use MIDI. So MIDI is kind of simple to use. First, you have to go to the device explorer, which is the bottom left um, pane, and as it says, you right click, add device, and you select MIDI input and you'll see all the input in your system. So in my case, I'll use this little uh, QNEO pad uh, right here. And OK, it's been added. Now um, what we are going to do is again switch to patch mode. And uh, so for in Faust, it's uh, mostly called polyphonic um, thing. So I can drop that one here. and. Here, you'll notice that a blue port appears. So the blue port in OSIA score maps to MIDI inputs. And if you click on the blue port, then in the inspector on the right, you can select the MIDI device, which was just added. Now, you can just press play. And if I play some song, it's very beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> OK, I'm a great uh, artist with those triangles. And so it's kind of simple to use like all the other things. Just have to drag and drop it and set the MIDI port. Now, next step is um, what if we want to not just use some FOS presets, but write our own FOS code. So you'll notice that there is this little window icon at the top left of things. So we can just press it. And we are not going to change that one because it's kind of complicated. Um, but we'll start from scratch instead. So if you want to make your own Faust scripts from scratch, you can just drop um, directly the Faust process and it will create an empty one. And right here, you can write your own Faust code. So for instance, the simplest program in Faust is empty process, which does nothing. And we can connect it like that. And of course, it does nothing. Then what can be done is, for instance, um, uh, having some kind of gain. So it's not very loud. So let's um, bump it a bit. Still not very loud. Um, OK, I hope I'm not going to become diff. OK, so as you can see now, there is some <laughs> overdrive or saturation here. So um, that's the first thing that we can do then. Um, maybe what we'll do will be add a slider instead. So um, it just uses the standard hash slider and the slider of those. So I uh, never remember the syntax. So I'm just going to check quickly on uh, Google. Uh, OK, so you can refer for writing your own FOS code to this great documentation. And what we want here is building a simple user interface. And we'll take this code, hash slider, which creates a slider with a name, 
a default value, minimum, maximum, step, that kind of thing. So here we can just replace our hard-coded gain by this. We aren't going to go to 10,000 because that will be very, very loud. We'll go from 0 to 5. I don't know. We'll start at 1. We'll go from 0 to 5 in steps of 0 0.01. OK, compile. And as you can see here, there is a small gain thing that appeared. So now I can modify it. And if you notice, all of this was done during the runtime. So you, you can edit first code while the things are running. So hopefully it won't crash, but still be careful as there are often bugs in various software stacks, which may make this kind of dangerous if you write invalid first code, for instance, or that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, and a last thing that we want to do is use audio input. So in this case, I'm going to use some bass guitar. Um, OK, so if we want to use the audio input in score, we need to add the, just like we added the MIDI device, we are going to add the audio device. So same process as, as earlier, audio here in the uh, device explorer and okay and this gives us so in my case i only have two inputs two outputs so main is the default zero bus and what we need to do is say okay um, i want to my input to go here in my game process so if i do that i can take my bus um, and I'll need to route it with Jack. Uh, so in my system, I use Jack. And I route my some cars input. OK, score. And if I do that, so my sound of my bass guitar is being processed in real time. So I can do. Um, more fun things. So let's say I want to add some kind of flanger on my on my bass and do that and enable and yeah. Okay. So it's a bit loud. All right, so that's mostly all you need to know to write fun compositions with first in score. So if you have any question, please ping us on the forum, on the chat, send us mails, anything, and we'll try to help you as much as we can. And don't forget the important Faust manual, faust.gram.fr. Even if it's a French website, the content is all in English and is extremely exhaustive. And remember quickly, you can edit your first code through this little button, and it's all in here. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. This was Jean-Michel for Russia. Yeah.